Okay. So, yeah, I am Hardeep. Uh, I am basically running uh, uh, AI and Advanced Analytics Center of Excellence at Accenture. So, today what I'm going to share uh, with you is about AlphaGo Zero. Uh, I just uh, um, uh, like happened to read this uh, nice blog about this, and uh, they had uh, some bit of internals on how AlphaGo Zero works. Uh, it's one of the uh, poster childs now, uh, and uh, there was some code as well, so I'm just going to uh, share my understanding about it. Uh, just a disclaimer, I'm not a reinforcement learning expert, so I'm going to just share what I've learned. So if you have any questions, I'll, I'll try to take them, but uh, if I can't answer, then uh, we'll take it offline. Okay, so before I uh, go into the hardcore stuff, I'll just try to... Uh, <laughs> This was the moment a computer called AlphaGo beat a master of the ancient Chinese game Go. It's not the first time a grandmaster has been humbled by a machine. But what makes AlphaGo different is that it's the first demonstration that machines can truly learn and think in a human way. AlphaGo's victory shocked experts in the artificial intelligence community. Many thought such an event was at least a decade away. So firstly, a few questions. Why is this important, and what's all the fuss? AlphaGo shows that machines can really learn. How so? Well, instead of using brute force to calculate all the moves it can make, like previous AIs, AlphaGo used reinforcement learning and neural networks to mimic the learning process of a human brain. Keep in mind that the ancient Chinese game, Go, has as many more possible moves than chess as there are patterns in the entire universe. So there's no way of just calculating every possible move on the board. That's practically impossible. For this reason, Go is the holy grail of AI, and learning to do such a task from scratch is a huge feat. Further to this, DeepMind's creators say that that... So I'll just stop it here. So this was just an uh, introduction about uh, AlphaGo. So just to level set the playing field. So uh, AlphaGo was back in 2015 and 16. So where are we now? So in 2017, they released uh, a version uh, which is a much more advanced version, which is called AlphaGo Zero, which is able to uh, learn from a scratch. So AlphaGo, which defeated Lee Sedol, was a mixture of supervised learning and reinforcement learning. So they started with a lot of uh, games of uh, grandmasters. They trained the initial network on that, and then they used reinforcement learning to refine it. But with AlphaGo Zero, what they have done is they have started a blank slate, and uh, the machine learns totally from random weights, and within a couple of days, it's, it's able to uh, go ahead. So I'll just show you a, a visual for that now. So when Google released this, that uh, when they trained AlphaGo Zero, uh, within three days, it's able to already beat the version which uh, beat the grandmaster Lee Sedol. And then uh, over some period of time, around 21 days, uh, it beat a version called AlphaGo Master, which was uh, online and with which a lot of other uh, grandmasters and champions played with. And in 40 days, it became a version which was like unbeatable and the best Go program at that point. And all this was uh, done with a lot less uh, compute and a lot more intelligence. So if you see uh, AlphaGo Fan is the FanUI version, which was the most initial version, was using a lot of GPU, so it had a lot of uh, uh, power consumption. Then the AlphaGo Lee came down to TPU, so pretty less. But if you see AlphaGo Master and AlphaGo Zero, which are the latest versions, they are using a handful of TPUs as compared to that. Because And all this is possible because of the algorithm. They did a lot of optimizations, and we are going to see some of them. And uh, on the right-hand side, you see a ELO rating chart, which is essentially how much intelligent is this uh, version as compared. So AlphaGo Zero is on the far right, and it's, it's the most uh, efficient version. Then uh, another interesting fact is like uh, when it started learning from scratch, within three hours it could do the basic moves. Uh, in 19 hours it learned the fundamentals and it started going ahead. Uh, and uh, in 70 hours it, it has reached superhuman levels and it can really play like a grandmaster. So now we are just going to, uh, the, the algorithm is pretty simple. So it's essentially a similar thing like how a human being will think. Uh, you mentally play the game. You uh, 
create a kind of uh, tree out of the moves, and then when you reach a state, you uh, you evaluate and you back propagate the the moves uh, through uh, the tree. And then when you have uh, uh, finished, uh, after you finish thinking about future po possibilities, you take the action which is the most promising at that stage. And uh, in the end, you see where did you misjudge and, and update the network. So now I'm going to go uh, into the details of the uh, algorithm. So it has a couple of parts. Uh, we start with the game state. Essentially, Go is played on a 19 by 19 board. So uh, they constructed this uh, kind of uh, network, which is essentially um, uh, zeros and ones, uh, telling you uh, which uh, of the uh, which of the pieces is black or white. So for the black one, they have the current state and the seven previous states. Similarly, for the white, they have a current state and seven previous state. And the last one is uh, telling this state is either is is black going to play or is it white going to play. So this is the uh, input to the uh, network that they will give. So this is the game state. And then they have this neural network. Uh, the neural network has got a lot of layers. Uh, so there is a basic convolutional layer. There is a lot of 40 around uh, uh, residual layers. And it, it's a double-headed network. So it has a value head and a policy head. So we'll see each of these uh, now. So on the convolutional layer, it's, it's like a normal convolutional neural network. You have the input, and then you have uh, 3 by 3, uh, 256 of them. And then you do batch normalization, which is essentially bringing the weights in, in, a, in a bound. And then you have a ReLU function, and uh, that's about it. But if I go ahead, in the, in the residual layer, uh, they have combined uh, two con layers. But then on the second con layer, they're doing a skip connection. Uh, so that's the that's from the ResNet architecture that Microsoft uh, released uh, earlier in 2015 or 16. So they have used a similar, and they have used 40 of such layers. And then finally, uh, they have something called as a value head. So value head is the uh, part of the network which predicts the uh, likelihood of this uh, from this state. Are you going to win the game or not? What's your likelihood to win the game? And the policy head tells you all the moves, and it tells you that uh, what's the most likely move you should be taking. So it will tell you on the board uh, in terms of uh, probability map, saying that uh, what are the what are the various uh, uh, moves which are available, and and for those moves, what what should be the likelihood to take those moves. So the policy head talks about the moves, and the value head talks about the probability of winning winning the game. So. Apart from this network, the third thing they have is uh, this Monte Carlo tree search. This is one of the key parts of their algorithm. So essentially, before I go into this, uh, let's see these four variables which they have talked about, uh, which is the number of times uh, uh, this path has been searched or this move has been taken. Then this is the uh, cumulative uh, value of that game. And then this is the mean value. Q is the mean value. And then P is the probability. So what they have done is they, they put the tree within the, uh, uh, so they take at each stage of the game, they uh, simulate using the same network that we have seen earlier. And the network has the two heads, so it will give you the probabilities and it will give you the computed, uh, uh, it will give you the uh, value and the probability vectors, and then the tree will compute uh, other steps. So essentially, it is a simulation. So at each stage of the game, uh, it will uh, have around 1,600 simulations for uh, the AlphaGo Zero version. So it will take uh, something as the uh, average um, mean value of the uh, network. And it's, it's basically uh, uh, a U is, uh, here U is depend defining a function between uh, the uh, prior probabilities and the number of times this has this move has been explored. And it will uh, take a sum of these. And then um, in the next one, it will it'll keep going. Uh, it will keep simulating till it reaches a leaf node. And where it will find the uh, final probabilities and the final, uh, whether it's winning the game or it's losing the game. And then it will back, back propagate all these steps uh, over the uh, tree. Uh, so uh, it will uh, calculate all these formulas. and. Then it reaches a stage where it has to select a move. Now, at this its state, it has got the value for each of these uh, uh, paths that it is going to explore. So if it is playing more deterministically, that means it, it, it's playing in a challenging uh, challenger mode, then it will pick up the best. But it, if it's still playing in exploratory mode, then it might pick up, uh, pick up the value, uh, which might not be the best, but it might explore other options as well. 
So this is the uh, Monte Carlo search tree part. Now, uh, how do these things come together? Uh, you have a stage of the game where it's called self-play because it's reinforcement learning, right? So reinforcement learning is mostly about uh, uh, generating your own data and it needs a lot of data. And it's going to learn from those self-play games. So it's uh, going to play 25,000 games uh, with itself, the network. And it's going to use the game state. And the at each stage, uh, when it takes the next move, it's not going to take what the network has predicted, but the uh, part which the tree is predicting, the Monte Carlo search tree is predicting. And if the game is win, uh, winning or losing, it'll, it'll store those values. And it'll keep all these things as played games in a memory. Because in reinforcement learning, you, you build up this memory of games, and then you sample from that, and then you uh, um, basically use it to retrain your network. So the second phase is basically retraining your network where you uh, have the memory of 500,000 games and you sample a few games out of it. Why it does that sampling rather than doing the last n games is because, say, if your solution is tending towards a, a, a not so optimal path and you keep training on that not so optimal path, then you might end up going in a uh, unoptimal uh, solution in the end. So it's always better to keep a memory of games and then uh, select randomly out of it. So uh, the loss function that we minimize is the prediction from the network. So the network learns how it, it is giving a prediction. But then you have the tree which is predicting based on exploring all the paths. So you want to make sure that these two are as close as possible. So this is a cross entropy which tries to uh, make them similar. Plus you have the uh, value function which is telling how likely you are going to win the game. And you are actually winning or losing. So you have to minimize. So this is a mean squared error here. So after retraining the network uh, for a couple of times, say 1,000 times this, uh, then what you do is you uh, evaluate the network. So whatever you have uh, now, uh, the network now, you will play it with the best network you have so far. And uh, you will keep repeating this process. And if, if this network wins more than 55% time, then this becomes the best network. And the cycle continues. So this is how they have uh, trained the version for Alpha, uh, uh, AlphaGo 0. So now what the code I'm going to show you now is about uh, Connect4. So the same algorithm can be used for playing Connect4 as well. So Connect4 is a game where you have to uh, uh, make four uh, consecutive dots in a row, either diagonally or uh, up or down. So it's, it's by no means a simple game. Again, it has a lot of combinations. But then uh, uh, you can also use the same algorithm to train this, uh, uh, to play this game. So I'm going to shift to the code. Okay, so uh, on the code side, there is uh, this code available on the GitHub. So the, there are some key files which I'm going to go through. There is a configuration file where we'll look at some configuration. There is uh, game rules. So this is the file where you will define your game and you'll define your rules. So you can define your own game and own set of rules to do that. Then uh, run IPython notebook is the place where you have the self-play, uh, retrain, and evaluate function. Then functions is just uh, where you create the code of the main functions is a helper function. And agent is the main class where you are defining these uh, agents which are going to play or take the action. So it is all the key code of uh, taking action, choosing action, doing a Monte Carlo tree search, simulating, and all that is in the agent class. Then the helper functions for Monte Carlo simulations are in uh, the MCTS class. Then you have a class for the model, which is in Keras. So the Keras model is. Uh, essentially uh, going to talk about the whatever uh, architecture I described. And then you have uh, a class for memory, which is just the basic structures to store and access this memory. And then you have a main class, which is a command line interface to run through. Uh, in, if you don't want the IPython notebook, you can use that. And then there are some ancillary class around it. So let's shift to some code now. OK, so this code is available. The files I talked about are available on this GitHub repo. And uh, I'm going to go through the files as I talked about. So this is the configuration part. So episodes is the number of games that you have. Oh. I think I need to. OK. 
So episodes is the number of uh, self-play games that you have to do for, for a uh, game as simple as Connect 4. You don't need uh, so many of them. So uh, 30, per, uh, uh, 30 per iteration is enough. Then this is the, uh, you saw that earlier it was doing uh, 1600 simulations. In this case, we are only doing 50 of them because now see, if you, if you make it as big a problem or if you do simulation so many times, it's going to take more time to train. And uh, since uh, Google has access to TPUs and all that, it can afford to do so much computation. But on a simple GPU like a 1080 Ti, you need a lot lesser scale so that uh, uh, you are able to um, uh, train this algorithm uh, in a faster way. And this is the, uh, instead of 500,000, the memory size I have taken is uh, 30,000 in this case. And then this is the retraining part, the batch size, the normal things, uh, learning rate and momentum and training loops. And, and the kind of uh, hidden layers that uh, we have used. So that is the, uh, the config part. Then this is the where you define the uh, game, uh, the game class, which is essentially defining your current rules of the game and uh, uh, what are the uh, winning positions of the game. So you define the game state here. And then you have allowed actions in the game, so which is essentially implementing the rules. And then you have uh, checking when the game ends, what is the value of each step, how do you maintain the score, how do you take action in the game. So those functions are here. You can have a read of this code at your own leisure. Then uh, this is the main IPython notebook. Uh, so here it just uh, takes the initial uh, uh, imports. And then the code uh, starts here, which it initializes the memory. So the the code has the functionality to stop in between and reload from the uh, last checkpoint where your memory and the model has been saved. So it does that housekeeping and loads the initial stuff. Uh, then uh, it creates the agent or the player, uh, which is going to learn. And th this is the, the loop, which will, is an infinite loop. It will just keep learning until you stop or kill it. So this part, it starts the self-learning part, and uh, it will call this play matches functions, which is defined in the agent file, which I'll go through a little later. And uh, then this is the retraining part. Again, the replay function is with the agent uh, file. Uh, so they are implementing all, but then this is what it, it has done here. And then this is the final uh, evaluate part, the tournament where you are trying to pit the uh, best player versus the current player that you have trained. So. Uh, this is the uh, code uh, for the functions file. Uh, again, so the function that we were discussing about the play matches. Uh, so it plays for the number of episodes, so number of times you are going to self-play the game. Uh, I think it was 25,000 for that. And for us, it's uh, just 30 or 50. And at each step, it's first going to uh, spawn. Uh, so it's going to take the players, set their game state, and then it's going to play this game in this uh, while done loop. Uh, and here it, it, it runs the uh, act method, which is in turn going to do the Monte Carlo simulation. This act method is in the agent class. Um, and then you have the memory management part of it, uh, where you add the memory and you uh, keep the memory up to date. So then I try to move to the main file, which is the agent file, where you define the, so user is when you are playing as one of the players, and agent is when it's uh, a computer player. So uh, this is the simulate method where it, it uses basically the APIs from the uh, Monte Carlo search tree. Uh, so whatever we discussed, like uh, it moves to the leaf node, is, is able to evaluate the leaf node, and then it's able to backpropagate. And it computes all those values which is there within these APIs. The act method is where uh, it runs the simulation. So it starts at each step and builds a Monte Carlo search tree, and then it starts the simulation part for each step. So whatever uh, the, is the output from the Monte Carlo search tree is what it uh, takes as the next action. Then it has some code for prediction, evaluating leaf nodes, uh, choosing the actions, uh, replaying, which is nothing but retraining the network. So uh, there are functions for the, uh, from the model class, which you'll see a little later, where you have the uh, entire uh, Keras code. And then you have some prediction, building the tree, and all this stuff. OK, so then is the Monte Carlo search tree method. Again, you have a tree with the root node. You have edges. And then uh, basically, the formulas that we were seeing there for u, q, and uh, uh, to compute all the various stages 
so all this code is uh, residing in this Monte Carlo helper methods. And then finally, you have the model in Keras, uh, which is, uh, if you see down here, the residual CNN network. So it is having the residual layer, it has the con layer, it has the value head, and it has the um, policy head. So whatever we saw there, it's the code is uh, here. And then the finally, the uh, last part is the memory part, which is just the structures to uh, upkeep the memory. So yeah, you can have a play with this code uh, at your own leisure, but the great thing is that uh, this code is open source now, so you can plug in your own game or you can learn from it, and uh, you can hopefully put it for some useful problem solving. One of the main uh, bottlenecks, or, or what, well, what I will say, is to productionize the reinforcement learning problem is you need a lot of data, so you need some kind of a simulation environment wherein you can play these kind of self games to learn. So that at present limits the amount of uh, practical use cases you can put it at, but then wherever you have the ability to do some kind of a simulation, this is a very good uh, general purpose algorithm that we can uh, try and use. So uh, I think that's about it for me now. Any questions? Search tree, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so, so the entire code is there in this GitHub, GitHub repo. So this file. Yeah, yeah. So all you need to do is you need to change this game.py file with the game structure, the validation rules for the games, and all that stuff. So you just if you go through this code, if you change the game file, this entire other code will just plug and play and work for you. So you can retrain. So what I did here was I used this code and I trained this over my GPU 1080 Ti. It ran for like after 36 hours, it become unbeatable. So initial versions, it was taking moves which were like not so sophisticated and it was it had gaps. But after some bit of training for more than a day, then it became a version which is like really unbeatable. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I can't hear you. The license of the repository is GPL. Okay. So we need to make our source, but if we use this, uh, then we need to make our own source code as open source. Is that correct? I think so, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, have a good hand. Thank you.